Well, see, I think this is the R2C2 episode that Yankees fans have been dying for, man. For sure. Like, this is the one. This man is a, he has become a, 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 a cult hero for Yankee fans. Mr. Nasty Nestor Cortez making his R2C2 debut. What's up? How are you, my man? I'm feeling great. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of this finally and uh, ready to rock and roll. <laughs> we should have uh, wore our, nest, our Nasty Nestor t-shirt. I definitely <laughs> got mine. Man, we should have. We should have. So where does it come from, Nestor? Where's the Nasty Nestor nickname come from? So, man, that's something that the fans have 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 put that upon me. I uh, I don't feel like I'm nasty by any means. I just, uh, you know, come here every day, show up, and 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 try and do the the best I can. Well, the best you can has been pretty excellent thus yes. far. You you got you know by far and away best strikeout to walk ratio in the majors. I mean, you're pitching like an ace. Nestor, last year, I think when you started, when you when you moved into the rotation and you started to pitch well, people were like, oh, okay. You know, we had seen you have some success out of the pen, but it was like, oh, all right. Like, this feels like a nice story. You know, like, oh, Nestor, he's, you know, he's competitive. This is a nice story. Oh, I like this guy. Like, oh, he does the funky motions on the mound, everything. And, and then all of a sudden you kept doing it. Start after start, having success throughout the entire season. And then it continues this year and you've only gotten better at one point at what point if there was one did you did it click for you that like hey i belong here not only am i a major league starter but i can be a damn good major league starter yeah i mean uh like you said last year i started in the, in the bullpen uh you know basically i thought that was gonna be my role the whole year and you know it was unfortunate with guys that got hurt and guys got in the il <clears throat> i was able to get the opportunity to start and, you know, I, I, I thought it was going to be short lived uh, until the guys came back. Um, but, you know, it got to a point where, like you said, I started doing well, you know, start after start. I started, you know, getting some length and, you know, I just took, and t- took it and ran with it, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, I, the, the success I had last year um, kind of like correlated to, you know, my, my velo jumping up a little bit. Um, you know, understanding more my pitch package um, as the season went on. Um, how, like, what areas could I got 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 better? Um, you know, as everybody knows, eighteen and nineteen and twenty were you know not so well for me. Even though nineteen, I did eat up a lot of innings for the team, but you know, I still ended up uh, you know with a higher IA and you know a lot of homers and you know maybe a little bit more walks than I really wanted to. Um, so it wasn't until, you know, I, I think it wasn't until like August or September last year where I was like, okay, like, you know, I, I'm probably able to do this, you know, more repetitively, especially with, you know, the three pitches that, that I throw the most, which is a fastball, cutter, and slider. Uh, I felt like, you know, I grip them almost the same way. So it's it's kind of like a, like a muscle memory for me. And, and, and I feel like I can repeat that every single time I went out. Man, you know what's crazy is that uh, watching you, you know, go into the bullpen and then get that uptick, uptick in velocity, I feel like like your, your your heater is already like sneaky and gets on people. But then when it's like actually ninety three, they have no chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. so having the pick pitch package, the pitch package that you do with the extra velocity, I feel like has just turned it turned it into you know almost you know where you can just put the ball where you want and they have no chance. Yeah, like at times I feel like. You know, I look up and it's like 92, 93, and I'm like, man, they had no chance on that fastball. Yeah. Like, like, I get it. It's 92. And like you said, it's sneaky. So it's like, it's a, it's a combination of both. And, 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 and when you look up, it's like, man, that was 92. And I blew it right by him. It's like, oh, man, this is this could be good if I can stay here, you know, as long as I can. Yeah. And I'm not even going to be funny. Like, when I watch you pitch early in the game, the games that you taught throwing 92, 93, I just turn it off. Like, I'm like, oh, he's going, <laughs> he's going six, seven innings today. You know what I'm saying? Like. They have no chance when the velocity is right there. Nestor, in what ways has Matt Blake been helpful as Yankee pitching coach with you? He's been great with uh, uh, to me, honestly, and and not only him, but the whole the whole pitching department. I think uh, when I signed back here last year uh, before spring, um, you know, I got some help when when when, when I got hurt in in, in uh, Seattle. I had a guy there that you know taught me like. Hey, this is where, where your fastball needs to be every single time for it to be sneaky and ride. 
So I kind of took that with me and I brought it to me last year in 2021. And I told, and I told the guys, Hey, um, my bullpens, my outings everywhere, anywhere I pitch, I want to be, my fastball needs to be this, this way. If it's below that, please tell me so I can, you know, know, know how to fix it and what I did wrong. But I want my fastball to look like this every single time. And then from there, we just, they added the slider. Um, the cutter was only getting better. I, I, I had only thrown it for two years. I know uh, me and C talked about it a little bit when you were here mm-hmm. about the thumb placement and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, I, after that, uh, just his, his, his preparation uh, towards me, for me to be able to come out every five days or, you know, when I was in the bullpen every time to, to execute my game plan and execute my strengths was, I mean, he, he's, he's one of the best when it comes to that. What goes in to adding the cutter, Nestor? Because I'm watching you backdoor some of these (laughs) right-handed hitters with it. And it's, I mean, it is filthy. Like even the ones the other day, and I think Booney might've even mentioned like even your misses, the other, like it seemed just like so spot on exactly. I I saw like, there was like so many O2 or one, two cutters to righties where it was like, right there. Yeah. Like maybe like a half inch off the outside corner. And I was like, (laughs) Damn, he is so locked in. Like, what what went into the process of adding the cutter, including you know what you talk with C about? So, so this comes back to like the off season of eighteen. Um, I went to the DR to play winter ball, um, and my slider never slider curveball combination never never has been great. Um, so one of the one of the pitchers there that was with me that actually played it here in the big leagues, his name is Oraisamet de Spain, de Spain. Um, he was the one that told me, Hey, look, grip it like this, start throwing it, uh, and see what, if you like it, uh, even if you don't just, just shut it down. So I started throwing it, but it wasn't until, so I got here 19 that a couple guys were throwing it and I got to pick CC's head and, uh, other guys that were like Mamani, people that were throwing it. And, and I was a little confused of like where to put my thumb because at times I, it would look like a slider at times it would stay true. So, um, yeah, basically, you know, I was offsetting it. I wasn't offsetting. I was trying to rip it. And there were so many things that came into it. Um, and it wasn't until, I want to say, 2021, where my velo started, my, where, where my velo came up, that it actually got, you know, like crisp. You know, it, it wasn't that that slow. Loopy, yeah. Yeah, dying at the bottom of the zone. Um, so now it's like 85, 87. Like, I can throw it at 88 now, and it's like, fastball fastball away with you know seven eight inches of, of of horizontal movement which is incredible um and that's where i can you know the heater which is a uh, the up up fastball and then the cutter it's like it's it's a great combination for me right now yeah it's it's weird with that thumb placement on the cutter because it just allows you to keep the same arm path you know exactly. what i'm saying like if you can keep the same arm path and just move your move your thumb on the ball and it manipulates you know how big the how big the cut is or how small it is um, it just helps you keep it consistent. Yeah, for sure. For sure. At times it's like, you know, and, and I feel like we, we've agreed on this in 19, we're like the thumb has to be a little higher on the ball, you know, to, to create that, that same plane on the, on the cutter. Cause if you go under the ball, you might get a little bit more sweep on it, you know? Yeah. It'll be more back foot than it is like at exactly. their hands, at exactly. the writer's hands. Yeah. Uh, Nestor, I, I think um, people also this week, they're certainly going to have, that play you made the other day on their minds and diving yes. head first. I mean, <laughs> you no, know it's funny. Like you're watching that play, see, right? And aren't you like, yo, this guy's such a gamer, man. Like, I was he, like, that's awesome because my fat he, ass ain't never getting over the cover <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> Nestor, what I love, I love what you described afterwards, though, when you were like, there's, you know, there's a pretty good athlete under under this. Like, talk, <laughs> right, sure. everybody, yeah. everybody mistakes how I look and how little I am. Uh, with with this athlete I am, you know, I, I played a whole bunch of sports, uh, sports coming up, and you know, if, if I was minus thirty pounds, people would think I'm a, I'm a real athlete. You know, you know what's crazy <laughs> is that like people don't like consider you a real athlete, but if you watch Nestor pitch, you can understand that he's a real athlete with all the stuff that he does in his delivery, yeah. being able to drop down, still throw strikes. That shit's not easy to do. You know what I'm saying? Like you watch him or Sonny. You can just see how athletic they are on the mound yeah. just by what they're able to do with their delivery. Yeah. What are you thinking, Nestor, as you're racing towards first base, getting ready to belly flop? <laughs> <laughs> so so I throw the pitch, and and 
obviously I see the ground bottle first, but you know, lefties we we land this way. And you gotta at, turn all the way around. But at first, I'm like, <laughs> oh, Rizzo, Rizzo, I, I I didn't know Rizzo was all the way back there. I'm like, oh Rizzo got it, you know, freaking go glove first baseman. We're good. And and when I look over, I'm like, oh shit, I gotta make the play. <laughs> so I start head down, start running the first, and and I obviously I know I'm aware of who's running. He's he's really fast. Um and I told myself, I think the only opportunity I have here is to dive as soon as I catch the ball. And obviously, like Rizzo gave me a really good a, a really good throw because if it, if it's a little behind me or even high, I don't think I get there. Um so he gave me a, a great a great throw and and I'm like I'm laying out I, I gotta lay out <laughs> so I'm laying out and obviously I, nothing hurts at the time like oh I'm good I, and I and honestly I thought he was out by you know more than what it, what it looked like uh, honestly um, and then I, when I saw the video again I'm like man I, I might have tagged it instead of the base like there was the 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 slow mo they have for the first base angle. That was so sick because you see like every grain of, yeah, of, of the of, dirt. Of, yeah. Of play, yeah, just just popping up. I'm like, now I don't even know if I really tagged them or tagged like I, he was probably safe for all I know, you know? <laughs> but um no, it was fun. I, I got up, my elbow was up well, all scraped, my knee was scraped. I'm like, man, I like I don't know how how runners could steal at bags every year and and, and, and stay healthy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's, that was the first thing I saw is like your right arm was like all under you. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man. It was amazing. Like it, it was just, it was, first of all, that replay was incredible. I mean, you could see, you could see like your, your chin slowing you down from the base as, as I tilt towards the camera. Like, like, you know, you're just like, just stopping short. It was incredible. But, but Nestor, I think that, it, that play exuded what people love about you too. Like you clearly, I mean, you are a dude who it seems like is going to do whatever they have to, to win. You know, you're going to, you're going to do whatever you have to, to win on the mound. We see it in your creativity and obviously in that, in your athleticism and your compete. Um, how would you describe yourself as a competitor? I mean, I, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve every single time. Um, you know, I like I said in nineteen, I don't have nothing to show for uh, what I did, but I felt like every two days I was getting the ball and I was, you know, giving the team what they needed, which was length. Um, and this year, you know, I, with the success, it's like uh, it, it's it's fun to be out there and, and it's cool to, to to have that. But I also like to let you know everybody know, not only the fans and not only my teammates, but everybody else that's watching, like. Like man, this this guy has guts. You know, this guy can go out there and he can compete. Um, even for like the guys that are coming up, you know, uh, whether it's minor leagues or, or little leagues or high school, whatever, that they can see this guy that you know he's not very tall, he doesn't throw very hard, but he's he's gonna he's gonna compete every single day he's out there. You know, there's there's two things that that they told me when I was growing up, and it was like you can only control your your attitude and your hustle. And, uh, you know, it, that goes a long way for me. Uh, so, and, and and that's how I like to find myself on when who I play. Who told you that, Nestor? Uh, my high school coach, uh, Shane Fulton. He's a, he was a, he was a quarterback uh, in, you know, back in his days in college, uh, All-American. And he was, you know, he was able to be my high school coach down in Hialeah. So I thank him for that too. Mm. And, and, you know, I think when, when you compete like that and your teammates, you know, know that they want to go out and play hard the day that you pitch. You know what I'm sure. saying? If they For know sure. that you're going to give that effort every fifth day and you're going to try to go out win a ball game and do everything you can, it makes them, it, it elevates everybody. It makes them yeah. want to play harder too, for sure. Yeah, and I think like, obviously all, all, all your defenders want to make great plays and, 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 and they want to be out there for you. But like, I feel like if, if they see me die for that, for, for, for that first base, you know, in that play, you know, next pitch could be a, a, a you know borderline homer, and, and we got Hicksy or Judge or, or Gallo out there like slamming themselves against the fence just because they see they saw what I what I gave I gave up you know to get that out, and mm -hmm. they know how important it is it is to have every out in the big leagues. You know, it's it, it they don't just come for free. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. How about Nestor? Growing up, how how did you get into baseball? When did you, when did you start playing? Like, who were your biggest influences? Uh, in, sort of in your baseball career growing up so, in your high school coach? So I started playing uh, when I was four years old. Um, I played the field, uh, you know, all the way until I was like eight or nine. 
And then I started pitching also. So I did both. Um, and, you know, once I got to high school, I, I, I did, I, my parents didn't let me pitch because down in South, down in South Florida, there's so much competition. It's year round baseball where they don't want me to pitch every, you know, the whole year. Uh, ah. cause you know, coaches you wanted to hurt your arm. Yeah. Most, most high school coaches just want to win and, you know, it, it, whatever the case may be, but, um, I didn't pitch to my junior year officially, uh, oh. in high school. Um, smart move yeah, by your I parents. Mean, they knew what they were doing with that. Yeah. I mean, it, it was like the talk of the time, like, Hey, make sure your kid doesn't throw, uh, you know, so, so many innings and, uh, don't put him to pitch so early or don't let him throw so many curveballs when they're 12, 13 years old. You know, that, that was just the, the talk of the town when, when you grow up playing baseball in South Florida, you know, uh, just like I said, we play year round. So it's not, there's not a, there's not a time to have a break or, or have two months off or three months off because there's no snow. The weather's always, you know, always good. So we're, we're down there, you know, playing all year. Um, and, and funny, my, none of my family members play baseball. So like my dad doesn't play baseball. None of my grandparents, uh, uncles, nobody. So, you know, the way I got introduced to it was like, Hey, here's a bat in a ball when I was, you know, probably two or three years old, who knows. Um, and I just, you know, picked it up, started playing. Uh, and then after that, I, I, I want to say like, you know, and this is probably going to stink for a lot of, <laughs> a lot of Yankee uh, fans, but in 03, when the Martins won the world series, um, you know, that that's kind of what gave me that drive to keep playing and, and, and to love the game so much. Wow. Yeah, so that, yeah, that was that was your team growing up there. Yeah, for obviously for the Martins were, were my team. I, I I grew up in Miami, so um, I mean I tuned in every, every single game, um, and I can I can tell you almost every player from like the O two roster to the O eight O nine. I I, I, can name, <laughs> I can name it all. Who was your favorite? Obviously Miguel Cabrera and Dontrell yeah. Willis. Both, I was about to say Dontrell uh, had to be uh, Trail. Yeah, yeah, both those guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah. as a hitter, obviously we have and as a pitcher, everybody, everybody want to be the D train, you know. Yeah. It, well, I, I'm gonna ask you more about Willis and and, the, and kind of his motion in a moment. But how about, I mean, being in Detroit this past week and Cabrera being on the brink of three thousand, knowing that that's your guy, was there a part of you hoping he would do it while you guys were there? I said, I kind of said to myself, I'm like, man, if if I was pitching and he had two two ninety nine, and I'm like. Man, I, I'm I'm throwing Peter right down the middle. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> no, 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 you wouldn't. You don't want to be a part of that, bro. Absolutely not. I was so I was so proud of Monty. Monty was so fired Hell up yeah. that day, and yes, he was yes. locked in. Like I was yes, so. Proud. You don't want to be a part of that shit, bro. You don't want to see that highlight over and over and over again. No, you don't. Nah, nah I was so happy that Monty didn't give that up, man. Nah, he was. He had no chance against Monty. Those no, Monty was locked in that day. Locked. locked he was in. locked in. Nestor, have you gotten to interact with Cabrera at all throughout your major league career yet? Uh, this year in spring, he was playing first against us uh, back in Tampa, and he he looked into the deck. He was always looking to the dugout, and I was there top step looking at him, and he was just doing like the you know the the whole stuff with the legs and then like the 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 lay wind up and just throwing up his hands like man, what the hell are you doing? But then you know he pounded his chest and 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 gave me like a fist bump. Oh, that's, that's awesome, dope. man. That's got to be cool for you. If that's your yeah. favorite player growing up, man. Incredible, incredible. He was, I mean, I was seven years old when he was in the big leagues, you know? So it's like, it, it's its crazy. It's crazy that I get compete, to compete against him. Yeah. Now, you mentioned Dontrell Willis. As you do some of the creative things you do with leg kicks and arm actions on the mound, is Willis one of the inspirations for that? Man, I wish I had... I wish I could be accessible, accessible as he is to put that leg all the way up there. <laughs> <laughs> where did it come from, Nestor? Like, where, where, where did you first learn to start kind of toying with your delivery and and uh, you know varying different release points? How how'd you get into that? Uh, I think in high school I would drop down, you know, a little bit. Uh, mess around with 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 the with the drop down, <clears throat> but never did the hesitation or anything you know crazy with with, with my wind up. And it wasn't until I want to say like 2016 or 17 where okay, I got drafted in 13. I had three years of you know success in the minors. Let me let me bring this out. <clears throat> let me see what they think. Like, let me let me see what people say about it. You know, because if they would have been like, hey, shut it down. We're, we don't want this. You know, right there and then, that's over. Um, but I kind of had like, like 
I was striking out people. I was getting good results. And they're like, hey, we kind of like that. Like, when when do you start to do that? How do how do you learn it? <clears throat> I'm like, man, I've been doing this. I could do this, you know. I could do this since I was drafted in 13, but honestly, I didn't know how, what what way the organization wanted me to go with that. And after 16, I think I, I if it has increased more and more and more to where you know if I'm throwing 100 pitches in a game, probably 10, 15, 20 times, I'm I'm doing something something you know extraordinary out there. How how do you decide, Nestor? Like what? What happens where you're like, all right, I'm going to drop down this pitch or, or I'm going to like, you know, do the quick kind of like the quick step where I'm going to, you know, hang for a little bit on and make it a, a slower delivery. When when do you decide and how do you decide? So I feel like, you know, when I get whatever strike one, strike two or whatever the pitch is that I'm, I'm getting the ball back. I said, man, I, I think this is a good time uh, to do something with it, you know, whether it's drop down or hesitate. Um, Usually also is like when they give, you know, when, when, when they're falling off good pitches that I'm making and I'm like, man, this guy, how, how am I going to get this guy out now? You know, I, and, and next thing you know, you're, you're, you're two, two, uh, after, you know, eight, nine pitches. Um, so that's, I, and I decided it's like, all right, here's, here's a good opportunity to do it. Take, take my shot. And if it doesn't work, I'll go back to my strengths, you know? Mm-hmm. See, did you ever do anything like that? No, man, I ain't. No, I, I didn't have the balance to, to stand on the ground like hey, that. He didn't have, he didn't have, he didn't have. <laughs> uh, what what kind of feedback do you get from hitters, Nestor, when it comes to the way you vary your deliveries? Yeah, I, I mean, I I think every every hitter will will, will say this and, and would agree, uh, especially when I talk to our hitters. I'm like, what do you guys got on this? I feel like sometimes I'm a little predictable. Like, what, what, like, what goes through your head when I, if I'm doing this to you? Man, and we're like, man, this, this messes me up big time, mm-hmm. you know. And, and at times, I feel like, I, I, I like, I shy away from it because I don't want to become too predictable. But they're like, this is, this is all we do. It's, it's all about timing. It's all about, you know, if the pitcher has the same, same rhythm the whole game. You know, it's easier for us to adapt. Not that they're going to hit it or it's going to be better for them, but it's easier for them to adapt. Time it so, up, yeah. So, like, for me, if, I, I feel like if you see where my pitches come out of, you know, in a game, my like, it's like this big, like, fastball, cutter, slider, change of this. So, it's, there's so many windows that my arm action can come out of. Out of and even that, like, even that, they, they, they can't just focus on one point, you know? So, Nestor, you also, I mean, you had an interesting road here. You talked about kind of like, you know, the seasons prior to last year and, and and the ups and downs. I mean, how about being a rule five pick and then being returned, you know, to to a team? What how did you get through that period mentally, knowing that, you know, this team took a chance on you, it didn't work out, and you're being sent back to a place that, you know, allowed you to uh to to be free to to be taken in the rule five draft. Yeah. Um uh... You know, I, first of all, I, I didn't know ever that I was going to be a big leaguer. Um, you know, obviously I had success in the minors. Uh, you know, you run my numbers up with anybody else in the minors and they're, they're great. Um, but I didn't know how I would transition to the big leagues. Um, and, and, and at the time, you know, what before the Rule 5 draft that, you know, Yankees had to protect players, uh, obviously there were, the, there were a handful of guys that, you know, we're throwing a hundred or hitting 30 homers in the minors or, you know, stealing 60, 70 bags. So obviously I, I, you know, I was, I was in the bottom of the, of the totem pole and, and I, and I knew where I stood and I only hoped for, you know, being picked up in the rule five draft. And, and luckily I got opportunity with the Orioles. Um, You know, they took a chance on me. They believed in me and I was able to make my big league debut with them in 18 uh, and which I'm really thankful for, but, you know, I was only up there for two weeks and, and got the afraid. And I told myself, you know, I, I, I feel like at the time in 18, in the beginning of the season, uh, the Orioles, Buck Walter and the whole team thought that, you know, they were, they were going to be contenders. Um, so I, I, I didn't really give too much thought to it. When, when that happened, I was like, okay, I'm going back to the Yankees. Like, whatever, like I, I got to go to AAA now and, 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 and compete, you know? <laughs> um, 
And then like towards the, towards the middle of the year where they, you know, they weren't winning games and they were in, in the bottom of the, of, of the division. And I'm like, man, I just got DFA'd by one of the, you know, one of the worst teams in baseball this year. Mm. You know, I was like, how am I going to, how am I going to be able to make it back to the big leagues with one of the best teams in baseball, you know, with the, the whole pitch, you know, cause obviously our bread and butter are always our pitching staff. You know, it, we always have a strong pitching staff. Um, so I feel like, man, like, how, how am I going to get an opportunity here again? And I have one more year of my rookie contract for, for like, for them to control me. What, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. And, and, you know, and I still kept throwing 88, 89, 90, you know, at times 91. Um, so I stayed all of 18 in AAA. 19, I go to, I go to winter ball. I, I, you know, I ball out. We win a championship over there. I go to the Caribbean series. I throw five innings against Puerto Rico over there. It's like, oh, okay, like it's finally, you know, coming back back to normal again. My confidence, uh, you know, the way I pitched, people talking about me again. So I come into spring in 19, and right off the bat, you know, everybody goes like one inning starter. I went three innings uh, opening day in spring, and people are like, man, how, how are you able to go three innings already? I'm, well, I've been pitching for, you know, three months already. I have eight <laughs> innings under my belt. <laughs> I'm in mid-season form right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I just kept my head down and, 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 and you know, tried, tried to do my best uh, and be as successful as I can so I can have another opportunity. And, and it, got, it, got, it got there again in 19 uh, in May, and I was, I was really happy for that. I feel, like, I feel like by the end of 19, though, because you had pitched for so long, like by August of nineteen, it was like, damn, like you've been pitching for a year straight by that time. Yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I, I felt like you kind of had to ran out of gas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like because you, I mean, it was just nothing else you could do. Like you pitching for twelve months straight. You went to winter ball. You pitched like in the Caribbean World Series. You came to spring training, and you were so far ahead of all all the rest of us. We were like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Like it was, it was crazy. Like, yeah. But, but I just, I just remember, like, oh man, like he's been pitching for a, a whole year straight now. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it, it just got hard at the end of that year. Yeah, people, people, a lot of people don't know, <laughs> but I think, and and I don't know the exact number, but I think if you tally up and you add up all the innings I threw from from the start of 18, 18. right to the end of nineteen, yeah, I might have had. 300 innings. No, you know? it was wow. crazy. It was a crazy number. Yeah. 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 And then like, and obviously as, as a player and as a, and, and as a pitcher and as, as a competitor, you don't want to say you're tired and you don't think you're tired, but your body is, your body's, you know, you're, you're ran down. And, and I, I remember, I remember us having that conversation in London. Remember when we were in London and I was yeah, like, yeah. man, I like, you gotta be tired. I remember us having a conversation about like how much you had pitched that year. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. And, and, and uh, apart from all that, I was like up and down, up and down. So the body yeah. was taken aware every single time, you know? Yeah. How hard is that, Nestor, to be, to, you know, be, be contributing at the big league level, then sent down? Come up, do your job, and then sent down. You know, then you come up, you get a little run, you're here for a few weeks, because you were on that Scranton shuttle in 19, right? Like, yeah. I mean, how... What what's the most difficult part about that? Um, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I I wasn't mad about it. Um, I didn't even take that into consideration because, like I said, I had gotten the FA in eighteen. I had gone up back to the Big League in nineteen. I was just happy to be here every single yeah. time. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, and 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 I get it. You know, when they get they call get called to the manager's office, they're like, "Damn, like, why am I going to sit down? I just pitched three scoreless, or I just went two for three. Like, but it's just, it's just the business, you know, it's like, Hey, you just threw three innings. We need a fresh arm tomorrow. Yeah. Are you able to go? Are you able to go two more innings tomorrow? If we need you to know. So, you know, the the reality is we need somebody else that can do the job because yeah, I know you want to get paid and I know you want to get your service time, but we need to win. We need to win tomorrow. You know, we already won today and we we used to, but we need to win tomorrow. So, and, and I understood that, 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 that whole side of the, of the of the business, you know, baseball, and 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 it is what it is. Man, see, Nestor has a great way about him, doesn't he? Yeah, like, no. If, if you can it, accept that, bro, like that's that's the key to being a, a big leaguer. It's just understanding that it's a business, and you're gonna get your heart broken. I always talk. I always tell you this: like you gotta you gotta learn from that very first time when you get that sting from whatever team. 
whatever yeah. organization it is, whether it's getting DFA'd or not getting called up or getting traded, like that's going to hap- go- going to happen to you in your career. And the faster and the quicker that you can have it happen and you get over it, the better your attitude to be. Yeah, some guys, some guys, you know, have that luxury of being, you know, a super prospect and and having success in the big leagues, and you know, all power to them. But there's other guys, which is the majority of the guys that get the FA from two or three and four teams until they they don't find their path, you know. And and it's it, I feel like at times you, you got to embrace that and you got to you got to get what's the good with the bad and 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 and, and leave the bad behind and, and take the good and, and see where the oper- the other opportunity arises, you know. But it's it's almost it's almost better to have the the adversity early because for it's sure. like like for me like being getting called up and getting drafted called up everything was so easy so that like when when I got traded from the Indians like I didn't know what the fuck to you know what was happening what's going on like I didn't even know they played baseball in other cities you know what I'm saying like yeah like it was it was so odd so like to get that first sting you know what whatever it is to get that first uh, piece, you know little uh adversity I think helps you the younger you can you can go through it yeah no doubt Nestor, when you're just like one more thing I'm wondering on that when you're going through that period of time right when you're getting that first sting if you will mm-hmm. who who'd you rely on who in your life would you bounce things off of or or who's there for emotional support or to help set you make sure you do stay with the mindset you're expressing to us yeah I mean there was a lot of people involved to be honest um at the time you know when I told my parents about it they didn't you know w- when I, me growing up, we didn't know how the draft worked, how the minor leagues worked, what what would, what, it, what, what it meant to be in the big leagues. No, like we, we didn't know any of that. We were so naive to it. We're like, oh, you you got drafted. Oh, great. You're in the big leagues. Oh, great. So yeah. Uh, you know, when I got the FA, I told them, hey, um, they 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 cut me and and I'm going back home now and to see what happens. Like I don't have a job now. And they're like, what? Like, what do you mean? What do you mean you don't have a job? So they didn't, they didn't understand. So they don't know how to like emotionally support me to that extent. Obviously they were like, Hey, don't, they were like, Hey, don't worry. You know, you, you know, you're, you're going to find another team, this and that, but they kept it real, real, like normal for me. And then it wasn't like everybody else that's been through it. Uh, even when I got back here, you know, to, to the, to the organization, they were like, Hey, like, you know, stuff like this happens, like, don't worry about it. And, and to me, it was the end of the world. So, cause I didn't know any better either. I was like, okay, I got the faith. I'm, I'm literally, you know, I'm messed up for, for, you know, how, however, how many, how, however many months I'm going to be here. And then after that, I don't know what's going to happen to me. So, you know, I, and like I said, there was, there was a lot of people that were involved and, and a lot of people that reached out and, 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 you know, gave me, gave me that, that, that shoulder to lean on. Hmm. Anyone in particular who you think of Nestor and you say, man, I'm, I'm so grateful that I had this conversation with that person. I can't I can't pinpoint somebody because I like I said there were there were a few guys that that did reach out yeah um and 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 kind of like told me hey don't worry about it. like even like my high school coaches and and mm. and guys that I knew from back then and even like personal friends and 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 family and you know th- there were so many people that that like I said extended out and, and and gave me that that talk um that just kind of like okay yeah I get it whatever but you know, I'm still here. I still got the FA. I'm still going through this. So, but it, it was good. It was good. I, I, I love, <laughs> I love the, um, <laughs> the parents <laughs> reaction of, Wait, yeah. what does this mean? Wait, wait. You lost yeah. your job? What does this mean? Um, yeah, they didn't know any better. Yeah. Any better. I, one of the things that Coney always talks about on the broadcast with you, Nestor, and I know it's something Booney talks about as well, is that you're fearless. Do you do you think that's a good word to describe yourself on the mound? Um, I, I guess I just like, for me it's like competitiveness. You know, leave it all out, all, all out in there, no matter what. Like, and, and, and it could come back to fearless, being fearless. You know, but I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm not scared of anybody. I'm just saying that I go out there and compete, and I and I and I go boss to the wall every single time. You know, and and that's just how I grew up playing baseball. And it goes all the way back to, you know, being in South Florida. Like I said, we play every, uh, the whole year. There's good competition year in, year out. And you're trying to be the best, you know, in, in your, in your county or, or, or your, or your area code or, you know, whatever the case may be. And, and I feel like that's what gave me that edge uh, to be who I am today. 
Nestor, when you're um, it's funny. Like this is something to see you can relate to too. But I thought it was great the other day. Coney was talking about that feeling in the dugout as a starter after you have a great start and how like the whole demeanor changes. And all of a sudden it's just like, I did my job. Like I can, I can enjoy the rest of it. What is that like Nestor after, you know, you pitched a great game the other day, you get in the dugout and you know, all of a sudden you're just a spectator with your smile on your face. How about the change in emotion after a job well done where you don't have to be locked in anymore? Yeah. I feel like, you know, obviously we all want to have good audience and, and when we do, that means you gave your, your your team a chance to win. You know, if if you're out there, you know, for at least at least five innings, uh, and you kept up, you know, either w- which it w- is it either the lead or or you gave up one or two runs, but we're still in the game. Mm-hmm. You know, as that, it's a bigger satisfaction than me going out there and punching out eighteen and and you know probably allowing four or five runs. You know, because I, I mean, obviously, if you're punching out eighteen, you're not allowing four or five runs. But you know what I mean, like. Yeah, I, I rather I rather have that where okay, my team is still in the game. With this lineup, we can still win, and with our bullpen, we can hold it down. Like that, that's that's all it is for a pitcher. I feel like I feel like if you can keep the team close and 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 come out of there with one or two runs, uh, you know, I think you did your job. And and it's always a good feeling when you're in the dugout and uh, that happens. Yeah. No, I mean that's all you ever want to do is just keep your team in it. Like. For me, I would always, you know, you feel good. Like, you get, like, a sense of relief for that day. But then by nighttime, I'm already thinking about, like, the next start. That you know quick, what I'm saying? It would, it would turn oh, that quick for you? Yeah. Recovery. I mean, recovery. Recovery. Yeah. And just trying to make sure I can feel this good the next time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It was always, oh, like, God. yeah, always just a fear of, like, not a fear, but just always, like, a, you know, I want to I keep that going. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So exactly. there was no time to like dwell on if it was, you know, how good it was. Like I, I need to do that again in five days. Yeah. For me, it's like, for me, it's like, okay, I want to feel this good in five days again. Yep. You know what I mean? So you gotta like, once the game's over, we won, we lost, whatever the case may be. But at nighttime, we're like, all right, now I, now I need to concentrate on getting, you know, back to where I felt, you know, a day ago, 24 hours ago. Because I need to do this same thing again in five days. Yeah. I want to do this again in five days, you know? This is, first of all, this is so funny you guys uh, describing this because C knows, Nestor, I love to like make these uh, comps to me and my voice for my career. And I feel this way. Like if I have like a string of a ton of broadcasts, and let's say I, I, let's say like, for example, women's final four I do this year, right? And I'm doing all these like heavy, intense games that tax my voice. And then I'm doing like two games in one night. And let's say I crush it and I have this feeling of like, you know, incredible, uh, it just, it, it's an exhilarating feeling. And then this feeling of satisfaction. And then so quickly it turns to like, okay, how am I going to get my voice right in two days for the national championship game? Like, what do I got to do? I got to stop talking. I can't be on the phone. I got to get hot water, like whatever. And there is, there's like, it's like a paranoia of performance. You just wanting to be at your best. Right. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you guys earlier, so, something that made me think of it, like Nestor, and see, I don't know if I've ever asked you this, but like, what's like, do you do anything that's sort of like, I don't know, unorthodox or strange to get your arm ready to go again in five days? Like, what wh- what kind of things do you do to make sure you're feeling good for your next start? Well, first of all, you know, obviously this is my my first year starting since the beginning in the big league, so it, it and 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 I got lucky enough last year where I, towards the end I was starting and I had to find a routine for me because you know all these pitchers and I'm I'm sure C can tell you like as soon as you pitch those four days are so important obviously every day is important but those four days are so important for you for you to be able to be ready in the fifth day it's like you know you got to go in the training room maybe three out of those four days or two out of the four days whatever you may need or or you know, you, you need to work out in between or you, you don't need to work out because maybe you feel good and maybe you can skip it to the next time. Or, you know, whether it's the bullpens that you got to go out there and, and, and throw either the second day or like everybody's different. You know what I mean? Um, but I feel like I don't do anything out of, you know, out of the extraordinary to go out there and feel great, you know, every five days. Um, but I do stay on top of my stuff. Um, and luckily we have a pitching staff that's done it for a while. And can tell me, hey, I, and I go to them at times. I'm like, hey, like, I'm so I'm still sore the third day. Like, what should I do to, you know, help this out? Or even like the medical staff is like, 
you know, what, what, what should I do? What, what do you recommend? Because like I said, I'm new to this, you know, and I need to find a way to be as sharp as I can for, you know, hopefully 25, 30, 35, I mean, whatever the, how many starts I get, but you know, I, I need to, I need to continue this, you know, for the rest of the season. And this is not just like a month or two month thing, you know, yeah. I can't just be good. I just can't be good for five, six starts and then shit the bed for the other 20, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's a, it's a tough balance, but I, I think, uh, I'm, I'm going the right direction to, to get to it. See, was there anything you did like in particular where you're like, man, I always, I got to do this to get my arm right. Like anything no, like, no, because, uh, you know, you go on the road and you go to different clubhouses and every place is different. So I didn't have any like one, like set thing that I did. I mean, I like to swim a lot when we were home. Um, that always made me feel good. Like, hmm. but I, I just didn't, I didn't count on it. Cause if we went to Boston or we went to Minnesota, they don't have a swim at, you know what I'm saying? So, um, oh, it's, you're not just like in a pool. You're on a, a machine. No, I was in, yeah. Swim X. We have a swim X yeah. machine down at Yankee stadium. So yeah, yeah no, nah, I mean, just knowing how, uh, superstitious I was. Um, if I, if, so, if I did something and it worked, yeah, and I pitch well, then I have to do it again. So I wouldn't like I wouldn't I wouldn't tie myself down to one thing. Yeah, hey, Nestor, how about you know for people getting to know you, they're hearing the pod and and they're wondering what kind what kind of stuff does Nestor like to do? Like on an off day, if you're like you know you have no responsibilities at the stadium, what are you getting into? What's a great off day for a nasty Nestor? Well, an off day here in New York is pretty hard for me to do the things I like. <laughs> Cause I like to fish and I like to golf. Um, so that when I'm in Miami, I, I, I do a lot of, a lot of fishing. Me and C actually, uh, went back and forth showing each other pictures and, 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 and things we did when we were fishing. Yeah. But, um, love it. Yeah, it, it. It's hard to do here in the off day. You know, I, I, I just, you know, either chill back in my place because, you know, we just had a, a 14 games in a row or 16 games in a row. And I just, I just want to like not have no alarms, no responsibilities, I don't got to be here at three o'clock. I don't got to be here at three fifteen. I don't got to be here at three thirty. So um, I like to just lay back and and just do me. But you know, at times we'll we'll we'll, we'll walk around, go to Central Park, ride bikes. Uh, you know, me and my girl just we like to be out and we like to we like to have fun. So so it's it's kind of like different stuff we do, but nothing particular. But when I'm back home, I, I do like to fish. I do like to fish. He fishes every day in off season. <laughs> really? That's yeah. amazing, man. It probably looks like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you guys gone out together yet? To we fish? haven't been no, out yet. Haven't. Nah, not yet. Uh, S- we will like for that, sure. Sounds like that's coming. Sounds Absolutely. like that's coming sometime so. soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got more time than he got right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Well, hey, hey, Nestor, how about do you miss Bronxy the turtle? I know Bronxy oh. got relocated, <laughs> man. Like. Bronxy has a has a new and I I know a, a good home with with the uh, new settlement community center, uh, yeah. with the with the in a retirement center with the Bronx residents. But do you miss Bronxy in the clubhouse? Uh, I've I've definitely got a lot of a lot of questions about Bronxy. Uh, <laughs> you know, I I think he's right where he needs to be right now. Uh, you know, taking care of him was 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 a little was a little taxing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I had to take good care of him because if not, you know, Peter or anybody else that's that's an animal lover, you know, could have could have you know, I could have gotten in trouble. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, and, and and a lot of guys here in the clubhouse were were helping me do that too because uh, trust me, it wasn't easy. Like you know, getting that tank, carrying him into the plane, having him on the plane, make sure he's he's you know has some water, had, you know, was fed. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy, but but uh, we got through it, and, and I'm happy where I'm happy where he is right now. I know I know he's 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 happy where he's at, and and a lot I think a lot of people will visit him, you know, here in this in in in, in this year. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Nestor. Hey, here's the thing, man. You got a great personality, and you're fun to watch on the field too. You know what yeah. I mean? See, like the way Nestor pitches, right? I, I feel like. Nestor, I'm going to talk about you to someone else for a moment while you're listening. See, I feel like Nestor, <laughs> is, I feel like he's the kind of dude we're talking about, right? Like, he's entertaining. He makes baseball fun. Yeah. That's how I look at Nestor Cortez. No, a thousand percent. Just out there enjoying the game, you know, a game that we all love to play and been playing since we were kids. And he brings that joy out of us. So, I mean, you know, some guys just play with that joy, you know, yeah. and, and uh, he's one of them for sure. So, Nestor... Thank you for doing this. Continued success. Uh, we will do it all in person sometime soon when C 
is not at the commissioner's office doing big things. Or, or golfing. Or golfing. <laughs> hey, you got to get yeah, out on the you, course you with Yester now. Outing, right? Man, I just I just left when I was in Vegas. Now I'm I going saw. I'm going to uh, the Bahamas next week. <laughs> wow. You got wow. Jeet's golf outing, right? I leave on Thursday. Tur- turn two foundation. Yep. There you go. Well, Nestor, you hit you lefty? Golf no, I'm or righty? righty. I say, I say you you golf righty? Yeah. Oh wow. I do I do everything righty except except for pitch. Throw a baseball, shoot a basketball, and kick a soccer ball. Everything else I do righty. How See, do I, that kick, I, I kick righty though. Really? I, I write righty. I do everything right. I write righty too. Yeah, except for, I can kick a so I can kick soccer ball right hand, right footed. How does wow. this happen? How do you get the wires crossed on certain things? You lefties are interesting people. I was, I was, I'm right handed. Like I'm, I'm thousand percent right handed. My dad taught me how to throw left handed when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. Oh. I'm a thousand percent right handed though. Like everything I do is right handed. You hit, you hit left handed too. I, I though. swing, I swing and throw lefty. That's it. That's the only thing I do left handed. Wow! You shoot a basketball lefty? I can't. I can shoot both. But I, I mean, if if like around the rim, I would go right handed. But if like the further out I go, I go lefty, just because I got wow. more power. If I had like <laughs> enough strength, like I could shoot right handed. But yeah, yeah. It's what do you weird. what do you grab a fork with? Righty, righty. Nestor, righty. righty. So so see, you consider yourself a righty. I'm right handed, cuz thousand percent. That you're the best right handed left handed pitcher <laughs> in the history of baseball, man. <laughs> That's the funniest. <laughs> and, and Nestor, if someone says you're a lefty or a righty, what do you say? Nah, I, I pride myself on being a lefty, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. You weirdos got to stick together, man. That's the thing. <laughs> Nestor, thank you, my man. Continued success. You're a joy to watch. Keep doing it with a smile. We'll be rooting for you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on this. I really appreciate it for real. This is this is one of my highlights, honestly, of being in the big leagues. I oh, said I, I said before uh, I said before pitching in the big leagues is having your own shirt, but being on this podcast is really really means a lot to me. Oh, uh, we appreciate Dude, it. We man. love hearing that. We love hearing that. Thank you, Nestor. Thank you.